starting and recording. So hi from my side as well. My name is Sebastian. I'm working as a freelancer based in Munich. I'm working mainly in the Java E development and I want to tell you how to put back hypermedia in REST with JuxRS and using Java E technology. So um, I see a lot in client projects that so-called REST um, APIs are used and how they are used, and I want to show you some examples right now. So what about this example? This is something you might probably have seen. In real-world examples, you have a URL, which is like, like a verb, like an action, do something, make something, and it accepts some request parameters, and it outputs some response parameters. So like uh, input, some request parameter, and some some output yeah well and of course it is post because everything is post right and you're you're calling calling some action and if you look at that it somehow um, yeah looks like soap without the soap envelope and yeah that's it so who has seen something like this in real world projects some URL yeah at least one <laughs> Or maybe some other example, which gets some information, which retrieves some information uh, based on some parameter, but it's also a post here. And you have some input and some output, which is not really considered RESTful, right? So one thing about REST, it is about resources, which means you don't have like RPC uh, calls, remote procedure calls over HTTP, do something, make something, get some information rather than you have your real business objects as a resource, um, which means what your application is talking about. You may be talking about users, you may be talking about books, articles, airbuses, maybe about planes, all the parts of the planes, maybe. Um, and your URL and your resources should, in fact, reflect your business entities, so your business objects, what your application is about, not exposing RPC functionality, like this example. You have a uh, resource get users, you're getting the users, which are in fact the list of users here, and you can see the um, output with one user, ID, name, duke, something else, and you have the list here. Um, it is good that you use here a resource and do not call like get all users or something like an RPC style rather than you use real resources. Um, but the thing is, there might also be a resource for that duke, for that specific user. And how do you access that resource? Well, probably you take users slash one, two, three, four, five. Because I often hear in real world project that REST is somewhat about predictable URLs that you say, oh, it has to be readable like users and then slash something else, slash something. And you assume that your um, URL looks like that, right? So what does your client do? It goes to that um, resource, uh, users, and then it takes the ID of the user and assumes that the URL of that specific user will be user slash one, two, three, four, five. So like implicit logic, right? Um, well, wh what you saw here in this, uh, that example is at least the use of semantic HTTP, which means you don't use post for everything, and yeah, because it's always post, right? Rather than you uh, use the uh, HTTP verbs how they're meant to be, and you use the HTTP status codes how they're meant to be if you look at the uh, RFC for HTTP. They all have a different meanings. There are several of them, not only like 200 OK, and there's more than just post or get. Um, for example, like this example. You have the same resource again, users, list of users, and you want an add an user. So, of course, you don't call the RPC add user method, rather than you're posting an object to the user's resource. And post, if you read uh, RFC, means it creates a new resource here, which you want to do. You want to create a new user's resource, right? And that user has a name, the motto, and something else. And the output is, in fact, 201 created, because that status code means, oh, I just created that resource for you on the server side. And you get the location. This is an HTTP header back, nothing else. And this is actually better 
than just returning what I also often see one, two, three, four, five into resource, right? With the ID of the user you just created. And then again, assuming that the URL of the newly created user will be something like users slash one, two, three, four, five. So you take away that kind of implicit logic how the URL is created on the client side rather than you just direct it directly to the resource uh, of the new resource here. And that is exactly the point where hypermedia kicks in. Because here you, you don't want to um, have the implicit logic on the client side, that the client somehow assumes how the URLs are created, rather than the server should be in control of the URLs. And the sh servers should direct um, the user to the URLs, to the resources. One example. If you use a website, airbus.com, for example, and you want to access some contact information. So what do you do? You go to that website and, well, you search the HTML output and then you get a contact link and that link has some ID. So you go to your address bar and type airbus.com slash the ID, right? No, you don't do that. You click on the link of the contact information. Another disturbing call who wants to get let in. But that's okay. All right. Congratulations, you'll now be on the live stream. <laughs> All right. You don't do that. You, c you click on the link because on the website you have several links and you follow them, right? And you don't care about the URLs or something. You don't use the address bar that often. And this is kind of the same for APIs. And this is what hypermedia is about, that you provide some links for somehow related resource on the last resource for your client. And your client can then, you have with a self-explanatory fashion, navigate through your API, like this example. This is the first uh, one we had. First, uh, the users resource here. You have a list of users. And instead of having the ID and let the client assume that um, the, uh, the URL of the user will somewhat be user slash one, two, three, four, four, five, you provide a link here. And the point is the user then only has to know that relation because it no longer assumes how the URL might look like rather than it um, re relates to that relation self here because he knows that self is about that specific user included in that list and that the self URL means that this URL will be the resource of that object. And you only have to rely on that uh, relation and not on the specific URL and you, have to you don't have to hard code that logic into your client. Um, any questions so far, by the way? Feel free to ask any questions, you will be given cool presents. If you dare to ask, we have many cool things Stephen brought wi with him. All right, um, this is another example. By the way, it doesn't ad actually matter if whether it's XML or JSON. It uh, could be anything. It could be any uh, media type of your choice. It could be your own media type. Um, this is a JSON example with, uh, with also two links. This is a book, books, one, two, three, four, five, something like Amazon. You have a name, you have an author, a price, or whatever. And you also have that self link again. And what you also have, you have an add to cart link with a relation, which means this will be the URL where you would have to post something in order to add that specific book to your shopping cart. And why are we doing this? Um, you might have a website or an application which uses an API, and you have some articles or books and a fancy add to cart button. But let's say you only want to add that Add to Cart button if that book is available, is in stock, or your user had a has a certain credit on his account, or the user is over 18 years old, I don't know, whatever your business logic may look like. And the point is, on the client side, you don't want to add something like, oh, well, if the book availability is in stock and this and that, then add that Add to Cart button rather than that business logic should reside on the server side, right? So for the server side, you decide whether to display that add to cart, uh, add to cart button or not, depending on your business logic. 
And then you provide that link with that relation the client knows about to the client response. And then the client only has to know, oh, well, I know what adds to cart relation means, and that means I have to display a fancy add to cart button. And then I will use that URL to access this functionality and to, in fact, add the book to the shopping cart. Make sense? Questions? All right. Um, well, the next thing is, OK, we now can somehow provide URLs to the client and let them navigate your API in a somewhat self-explanatory fashion. But how do we know what information has to be posted here for that article or that book to be added to the shopping cart? Because you may call your API with post something, some request to that URL. And how, yeah, how should that be done in that case? So here's another, another example. This is a media type called Siren. I will show that in a minute. And you also have that books resource again, so like we just had, name, author, something else, maybe some links. And you also have some actions. And the action, and this is somewhat similar to a H a HTML form in, in some sense, has not only a name, which is the relation again, you can also specify a method, the URL, of course, the content type, and that, uh, that is the point, the fields. So the information the server needs in order to add that book. And that means, on the client side, you only have to know the relation add to cart, so what that in fact is, that add to cart button. And to access that functionality, you have to post this and that information, the ID, the quantity for a book in this case, to that URL using that content type. And then the only thing you have to know is, besides the relation, where that information, the ID and the quantity, how many books you want to add, comes from. The ID may come from the resource itself. The book may have some ID. And the quantity may, well, be like a drop-down box or some UI functionality or whatever. And you only have to know these three information in this case. And all of the other things reside on the server side. And the server can then, in fact, decide how the URLs may look like, or the method or the content type may look like, and the client can adapt to this, right? So it's, in a sense, somewhat like a form on that website example again. So if you, you're on the uh, Airbus website now with the contact form, and you have a contact form, please fill in your name. And you might, may never seen the contact form ag uh, before, but still you're able as a human to fill it out because you know, oh, name, I know what that is. And you type in your name. And this is, in a sense, the same thing. Not, uh, not in an artificial intelligence sense that uh, the client knows what that is, but rather than you only rely on a certain information, on that ID or quantity the client knows about, and it ignores all the rest, and all the functionality and methods how to access the information is given to the response. Questions so far? Yeah. It, de it depends what you're trying to do. Um, I will just repeat the question whether I would favor it to uh, provide the links in the response or in the HTTP header field. There is a HTTP header link functionality. And um, the thing is with putting it into the header fields, this is of course simpler for the functionality, but you don't get um, that much control. Because if you have that list of users, you can't add like five different links and you would somehow need to uh, correlate the links to the response, right? So if you have a more complex structure with a lot of links, a lot of actions, and so on and so forth, you, you don't get <laughs> pictures. Um, you just can't uh, add it to the header because you don't get the um, correlation again. Very nice question, Stephen. He gets a present. Other questions so far? All right. Um, there was a media type called Siren. There are, in fact, several of so called hypermedia formats, which are uh, all of them are JSON, plus some functionality to provide links, or in this case, actions, to uh, enable that hypermedia functionality. 
none of them are really standardized. There are yeah, some attempts to, well, hell is probably the most used so far. Um, the reason why I didn't choose hell here is was that it can provide actions like we had with the add to cart functionality and the fields um, so far. The other things you might be interested in is Siren. I think this is a pretty good one in terms of productivity as well. Um, JSON schema is another interesting thing. This media type lets you not only provide all the links and actions you might need, rather than also the schema for your business object, which means you have a book and a name for that book. And yeah, well, name, what is that in fact? So you can also define schemas here, how your business objects look like and what the information is about. And then you, in fact, need zero um, documentation because all of the information is put into your API and can be called in a self-explanatory fashion. And then your client basically needs to know not much to access all that functionality. Um, you would just need to implement it. And that's the keyword, let's implement something. Questions so far? Okay. Um, I will use, uh, I'm blocking the view, I will use a default um, Maven Java E7 project. So I will just create uh, one. This is, a, let's call it hypermedia test. This is a simple uh, Maven archetype which creates basically Maven, uh, an empty Maven Java E7 project, if it would work well. And then we use IntelliJ to open it. This is just newly created. It will take a few uh, seconds to scan and uh, import everything. And this is, as I saw, uh, said, basically empty. We have a POM file here with the um, Java E7 dependency, which is provided, which means your WAR file will be uh, empty in this case. This package as a WAR file. And we have a JuxRS configuration, which is just a JuxRS application class. So it's basically empty. All right, let's add a JuxRS resource. So we have the books example. So we call that um, books resource. And this will be a path. So it is a JuxRS resource called books, right? And it will have one method which returns a book. Uh, sorry, a list of books. Yep. So we have a list of books here for the first example. This is the books year resource, and then we have the books one, two, three, four, five, one. Um, this is a Java E uh, project, so of course it will come from some EJB in this case. Let's call it bookstore. So that JuxRS resource will, uh, in fact, call that bookstore to retrieve the books. Nope, not that one. Not on list. Class, so we will create um, an EJB stateless, which returns a book for us, or sorry, a list of books in this case, and then a book. Get books. This is just like Hello World programming. This is pretty boring so far. We create a POJO in this case. Um, with what we had, a name, an author, and, well, an ID, right, and, well, a price. By the way, don't do money calculations with floating point numbers in real world projects, right? Bad example. Um, get us and set us, and just for convenience, a constructor. Nope. All right. 
should be clear, simple POJO, nothing else. Um, and this returns a list of books. Oops. With ID one, name Java, author Duke, and a price. And another book, ID two, hello world. Should be clear. All right. Now we have that resource. Um, that resource will in fact produce JSON in this case. So we use the add producers functionality and the media type application JSON. And then um, return the books from the bookstore. And yeah, that is the wrong import. And that's it. And then we will have another um, resource which returns just one book, right? So we have a path here which uses the ID as a path parameter to access only one book and um, uses that information as a path parameter. Um, questions? Should be, should be clear case this is just like hello world programming so far return new book from the id java duke all right i won't even run this example because it's kind of boring this has nothing to do with hyper hypermedia so far so what we want to do we had this example with yeah let's stick it to json with that books and you wanted to uh, add a self link, right? So let's add some links in this case because that book can be modified, the JSON output can be modified. You can, in fact, um, add the URLs here. Let's use a map from string to URIs. The string is the relation in this case. Um, we will use the links what we had. And you can also use JAXB mappings also, if you use JSON, so all the JSON implementation implementations, um, make sure the JAXB annotations will be taken into account here. Um, so you could use under uh, name links to change uh, the name of the JSON attribute in this case. All right, get us and set us for this as well for the links, and then we can add some links to this POJO, which will be also um, returned here. So we have the controller here, and now we will add some links to the output, which comes from the EJB. And the question is now, okay, how to um, access this information, because how to con uh, construct the URLs, right? And you don't want to the, the point is you don't want to repeat yourself all over again. So how the links are constructed in this case, books slash one, two, three, four, five. So you can use some functionality from JAXRS, which is a const that, uh, context object injected with at context called URI info. And this is a pretty um, handy class to provide information how URIs can be constructed in your application. So um, yeah, in this case, we will use fancy Java 8 technology to add the links. So we have a book. Um, oops, sorry, get back to books. Um, books for each. And then we will add some links for each book, right? So we have get links and then put add some self relation in this case. And here the self URI. And the question is, where does that come from, that URI, right? So you take the URI info, can you can create a base URI builder, and you can access information from your JAXRS classes, somewhat like reflection. So you can say books resource dot class path will in fact give you this path here from your uh, JAXRS resource. 
so you don't have to repeat your paths all over again. And build will construct that example. So you would get books in this case. But um, you want to add not only the books rather than the books slash one, two, three, four, five, right? So you need to access this uh, path here as well. This can be done by path books resource and then your method name as a string, get book, because that's the name of your method. And then you have this ID as well. And you don't want curly bracket ID, curly brackets. You, don't, you want your ID, in fact, uh, of the, your real book, of course. So that build method here accepts um, arguments. Oops, sorry. Book get ID. And then this ID will be used to substitute that path parameter defined in the method down there. And this will then create the URI which points to books slash one, two, three, four, five. Questions? Um, yep. Uh, the question was, what would, uh, would happen if you have method overloading? In this case, this wouldn't work. So if you um, define several methods with different um, parameters, but different uh, path parameters as well, so the method has different parameters and different path parameters, so that for Jack's arrest this in fact would work, um, then this wouldn't uh, work for your example. But of course, the question is: Your JAXRS methods aren't not called in another from another context, right? So only via um, an inversion of control from your container. So you can, in fact, um, choose the name for your method. So this is no problem. You can then add a real, well, a better name for each method to be somehow unique, also for the ne method name. Very good question. You guys are present as well. All right. Um, yeah, good point. Um, he said, well, that URI info can also be used as a um, parameter in the method here, so it can also be injected here. Um, you probably need, uh, when you need it several times, you can, in, in fact, yeah, it makes sense to um, inject it in your class directly. I personally inject it in the class every time because then your method looks somehow cleaner and your method only contains information which the method itself needs, like a path parameters, header parameters, or other params, or your request body. So I mostly use that pattern that for your method, you only access that information you really need uh, for, the cl uh, for the client call, right? like params or um, request param uh, the request body. Good question. All right, so let's take the book here and add the same functionality as well. We have the uh, link and the self relation using the self uh, URI. And of course, uh, copy paste programming, we use this one and then use the book down here. And we also want to add the self, uh, the add to cart relation link, right? So we have another um, URI in this case, add to cart. This will be another resource. Um, I would just create that for the sake of the example. This is will be, in this case, an empty JAXRS resource just needed um, for this example here. Call it a shopping cart. Just to, um, increase it. And this will stay that way. It can be empty. This doesn't matter in this case because we only need it to uh, provide that link. And this is then being empty, only to uh, construct the add to cart relation. And we have the add to cart and add to cart here. And you see, here you could um, use your business logic, whatever it may look like, whether you want to, in fact, add the add to cart link to your links here or not. And then the, the client decides whether he, um, it creates that add to cart button or not. So you get uh, 
you get back the control of everything here on the server side. Um, all right, so the links will be added here. Questions so far? No, very good. So we will just attempt to run it. This is a Maven uh, project, so we will use a def um, the default Maven clean install build to create it. And of course, the build is basically empty because of Java, uh, Java E, which is a good thing. So even faster as I can talk, this is created. And we will just um, run it on a Wildfly. This is a recent Wildfly 10, I think. And there are no errors. Very good. And it starts quite fast, as you can see. And then we will fire up a, oops, a REST client of your choice. I use Postman in this case. And, of course, I already created something. Local host, type in media, test resources, tests, yep. And then, media hyphen user, media test resources, test proposed not found. Okay, the question is, Sorry, what was the... Ah, I called it tests. Nobody's paying attention. So the name is books. And now it will have the resource for all books in this case, for all self uh, links. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, I don't know whether you can enlarge this application. Sorry, but you don't see a lot. You only have the name, author, price, and the link which points to books slash one and two in this case. And you can also follow that link and then you see the same thing plus the add to cart link, which points to shopping cart. And another cool thing of that URI info functionality is, that is why I call that get base URI builder. It ac uh, actually access the information of your current request, of your HTTP request, which means if you um, use your application with some um, Apache or Nginx proxy up front, what often is the case, you can access that information and you can give back the URI with the domain for which the um, request originally was sent. Which means if you, if you have the proxy, then you get the uh, address of the proxy back and you see, I uh, repiped that to my local host. You can add the original domain or port in this case. So the URI info for the get base URI builder uses the information of your current request, which is very handy if you use an, a proxy up front. Questions so far? Then you, uh, exactly. Yeah, um, good point. Well, should I repeat? I uh, will just answer the question. That's easier. Um, <laughs> um, yep, you will not um, output the link in your resource uh, response in this case. So the client should not create um, that that information. Sure, but what if he does it? If it does it. Of course, you would um, need to control that on the server side as well. So that on the server, you say, oh, this um, adds to cart functionality in this case should only be called when the, uh, the, um, the item is in stock, for example. And then for the next resource for the add to cart functionality, you also have to check that again, of course, because the client could, in fact, always call what it wants, right? If it assumes some URL. So this should always be they are handled in both cases. So of course, you can't rely on, on the client uh, functionality in this case. You will have to do it twice, as always. But then your client does not assume this anymore. So if your client works collect correctly, then everything is fine. So it's the same thing like, uh, like security, right? When you don't, uh, don't publish a link, but uh, if it works, then sure, someone could use it. But you have to uh, make uh, sure that it doesn't. That's the case. Very good question. Present. All right, 
question? Other questions so far? You mean a, a REST client just to access uh, whether I have good uh, so documentation for an offline uh, REST client? Yeah. Um, you can use curl or any other <laughs> command line. Well, the, the question is you could use whatever you like because this is HTTP and everything which understands HTTP can be used to access that information, right? And I'm a command line guy, so <laughs> I would use something like curl. Uh, uh, yeah, not wget, but all this functionality. You could use Postman, like in this case, you could use some Java functionality. If you have a more complete, uh, complex example of your APIs, which you want to test, when it makes sense to script these examples or to use a higher uh, language like Java, you could use this as well. And then you could either use JuxRS as well on the client side or some, some other uh, basic Java HTTP, uh, HTTP functionality. Actually, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, for Chromium, this is Linux uh, for Postman, but actually it doesn't matter. There are a lot of uh, REST clients in this case. I only, only use this as an example. I could also use curl if you want to, if I get the syntax right. <laughs> actually, it doesn't matter. It just has to understand HTTP in this case for SGP-based AP APIs. Good question. Any other questions so far? Very good. Um, yeah, this was the first simpler example with these links. Um, but what if you want to add something more complex, like this Siren example? So I will show you now the same example, but not using POJOs um, to control the output, rather than a programmatic approach, which gives you more control of the whole output. So let's delete that. and. Use, there is a functionality built in in Java E7, which is called JSONP. JSONP API, JSR353, um, which you can be used to programmatically create JSON objects and JSON create, uh, arrays. And this is exactly what we like here. So we, in this case, output a so-called JSON array. This is JSONP, Java X.JSON. And every um, implementation of JuxRS, which understands JuxRS and JSON, and that JSONP, um, also has to support these types at, uh, as output types. So this works out of the box if you have that produces media type application JSON up here. So we will now have the same example, but uh, using that API. We will have our EJB returning the books in this case, and now we will also um, use some fancy lambda expressions and streams to create to construct that. So we will have a mapping functionality, which um, creates JSON objects. These can be created uh, with JSON .create object builder. Then you have a builder pattern like functionality to create these. And you can say add, and this will in fact add the JSON properties. So you have something like a name. That information comes from the book, of course. Add name, add what we had here, author, um, price, and of course um, the links. And as shown here, the links should be a uh, nested JSON object. And this can, uh, can be done as well. So you can, of course, add nested um, objects here, links. And then you have, we could also um, use this as nested method calls, but for the sake of readability, we won't do that. So JSON links. And that JSON links is, um, is a JSON object you, uh, created using the same functionality. And then it will have a self relation, right? And that self, oops, the mouse distracted me. And the self, um, same self URI, which we had down there. This is why I can just copy paste it again. Your self, uh, self URI, 
and then the URI is created using the same JAXRS functionality just like before. We have the book dot, uh, get ID. We have the um, JSON object created from this. At the end, build is called to create that object, and the JSONP API doesn't understand URIs. It only knows uh, Java primitives plus a string plus a few else. So we have to call dot to string on the URI. This will um, create a string from the URI containing the sa uh, same information. And then that JSON object is created with exactly these information here. So um, we have now a stream of JSON objects, right? Using that mapping uh, functionality to map the books to JSON objects with that logic. And these JSON objects should be now all added to a JSON array. So we use um, the collect functionality from the Java 8 streaming API. Um, and just because we can, we will add, uh, we will have fancy method handles, um, not path, sorry, JSON, create array builder. And then you can um, use JSON array builder, colon, colon, add, JSON array builder, uh, colon, colon, add, to add all these JSON objects to some um, JSON array builder and then using dot build to create the JSON array. And that's basically it. You return this uh, example and everything else is deleted. Questions? So what we did we do here? Um, we called the EJB to retrieve all the books, all the pojos in this case. We uh, used uh, Java 8 streams to map the books to JSON objects using this functionality, and at the end uh, we call the JSON array builder to add all the JSON objects to one JSON array. And now the same thing is done here, using only one JSON object for the second uh, resource. We will have the book in this case, and then we uh, return some JSON object builder again. We will copy paste program again to return all that information. We have book, book and book in this, oops, in this case, and the JSON links, which is again a JSON object. But in this case, we not only have the self uh, URI, rather than we also have the add to cart URI, right? So add, add to cart using the add to cart URI dot to string and that gets built to a nested JSON object. This of course is not needed anymore. And now we have the same thing. We only have one JSON object created from that book plus the nested links with the self uh, URI and the add to cart URI constructed um, using ja, uh, ja, JAXRS, sorry, functionality, and this is returned in that case. Questions? So let's run it again. Um, we just do a Maven clean install again in this case, because plain Java E is crazy fast, will be done in a few seconds, and we can yep, start it, run the example again, and hopefully it will show a similar output because we um, actually didn't change much. Um, you see the links again here, links and self-relation. And this output, the same example just uh, as before. But the difference is, of course, now we um, use the programmatic approach to construct the output. And now you could do, in fact, whatever you like, how your um, response may look like. Um, because for that example, using something like the Siren media type, you have more complex JSON objects. And now, as you saw in the example, you can create whatever your JSON object looks like. You could create whatever you like, and you could also create your own media type. Just using um, a programmatic approach gives you that functionality to do this. And for real-world projects, you would, of course, outsource that functionality how your JSON objects are created and also how your URIs are created to some other CDI managed bean or some um, private functionality so you don't have to repeat yourself all over again. Questions? 
everything crystal clear? All right. Um, for the siren example, there is also some um, dependency for, for Java to, to create these examples in an, well, let's call it easier approach. I can show you an example here. Hello. Using, um, do you have internet access? I hope so. A media called, yep, saw it and this is in fact a similar example I just showed you using Siren in this case, which is I think a pretty yeah, productive um, content type to add hypermedia to your API. And you also saw these examples like actions, add, add to card and a few other things. And there is of course a Java library for adding Siren. So I can just show you here. Siren 4J, which enables you to let me show you to create these um, JSON output in a more programmatic fashion. I have folders, found the entity builder, um, and here you can add something like action in a more programmatic way. Of uh, of course, yeah, the benefit of this is you you have uh, predefined methods for exactly that siren content uh, type. Um, of course, the downside is you have another third-party dependency in this case, if you use something like this siren for j This is why I showed you the JSONP example, because then you only have a plain Java E7 approach, and you have the full control how your outputs, in this case, JSON output, may look like, and you can do whatever you like, and you may probably use this functionality and outsource it to some from sep uh, to some separate compon uh, component like a CDI managed view. And this is why I, I showed you the other example. And this is on GitHub called Juxares uh, Hypermedia. And as touched on my account, you can check out the examples if you like. It shows a simple um, example using um, something like I showed uh, before with the simple content links and a more fully fledged Siren example using, in this case, that Siren for J. Um, functionality if you're interested in that. Any questions? Well done. Thank you very much for your attention.